<laughs> and Zane. <laughs> and as you can tell from those guttural noises that we just emitted, we are excited to be here. We're excited to cast. Today we'll be casting Bear Brawlers versus Highlander Dragoons. This is expected to be a spicy match, but you know what? I can say a lot of things already, but I'm going to go ahead and let Zane and Vampy take it over. We're looking at the NW map. We're looking at the first match, which will be Solaris City. Take it away, y'all. So before we get into the map by map, Bear Brawlers, from what I've seen, very much seem to be kind of the upper cusp of what I'm going to call tier five in this tournament. And that's, you know, ourselves and 2D20, critical damage unit, strike wing, nuclear fallout, and bear brawlers, all the teams that are sort of expected to go either one and four or two and three. And of, it pains me to say this, but of the five of us, I feel like bear brawlers are probably the best team. And we know that Highlanders Dragoons are a very solid team in kind of the next bracket up in the in the tournament. And I'm going to be really excited to see them smash some mechs together for us tonight. Indeed you say. So Bad Brawlers indeed I will agree that they are in the upper cast uh, in comparison to us 2020 at least. Um, they definitely have put in a lot of work and actually I'm kind of like in the discord as well so sometimes I do see them discussing and they go over mech builds and they just have good times among themselves discussing mech builds and strategies so I do see that they definitely put in work and we'll be excited to see what they can bring to the matches today. So as we get into the first drop, which reminder for everyone in the audience, this is the 270 270 ton drops with no lock on weapons fighting on Solaris City this week. One of the trends we've seen in the tournament so far, aside from just drop as many MPLs as possible in the first two drops, is that you really can kind of ignore the objective markers. On these later drops, you tend to see a lot of 40 tonners, a lot of 50 tonners, and those mechs have a short enough time to kill that if you get into a brawl quickly and you can win that brawl decisively, you can kind of play catch-ups on the cap points in the back half of the match. Now, Bear Brawlers, to their name and to their credit, are very confident in that brawl. So I almost want to see them just ball up, try to... Maybe if they can catch Highlanders or Goons flat-footed, they can pull out a win here in these early drops. Yep, you're absolutely right. From the matches that we've seen so far, as you say, the matches, um, in the first two matches where the drops are tonnage are lighter, we do tend to see Brawl first and Cap later, while when we move up to the later matches, I mean the later uh, tonnage, then we will see Cap first and Brawl later. So um, definitely I am predicting, as what you're predicting, they will take the fight first and then Cap later. because. When you're talking about light max, you just destroy the legs and the entire max is gone. And light max don't have a lot of hit points, so they should be quite easy to take out. Mm -hmm. Now in these, in Solar City, where I'm expecting the fight to break out, it's either going to break out, to my mind, on the theta point or in kind of the buildings around that central theta point, or potentially if you look off to the either side of theta, you do have these very long firing lines that if I turn on the grid here, firing from kind of this spot into Delta 4 or from Delta 5 down, you do have these longer firing lines. And I could see, even though you do have a tendency towards very light, very fast mechs in these early drops, trying to pick a longer engagement range and taking advantage of those corridors. Because on Solaris City, if you can control this sort of central square of the map, you can basically get easy shots and easy intel on anyone trying to move around the map and if we do see a bit of a departure from what our expectation is and a more of a cap focused game controlling theta lets you easily control two points whether it's theta kappa or theta epsilon yep so even though um solar city has buildings and open walkways or open spaces as you say that affords line of sight those same buildings actually provide cover and the team can actually choose to skirt around the outside of the map and just roll and you know go the sneaky route though it's longer but as we say it's a lighter drop they the, the max can actually afford to lose the cap points later and if their tactics work out and they manage to stick behind the enemy, I'm sure they can do a ton of damage. Maybe even take one mech out in one shot. Mm -hmm. Now, Vampy, if 
Well, we do expect to see as many MPLs as the teams can reasonably fit into the into their drop decks for these first two drops. What mechs or weapons are you kind of expecting to be the, the Dark Horse pick for these two drops? The Ooh. Dark Horse pick? Um, I think an LB2. Um, so you have one mech sit at a further range and just pound LB2s into the uh, opposing mechs. And it's creating some sort of uh, distraction. And as we all know, ACs tend to create some level of panic within the pilot. I can and see they that. Just choose I can see to, that. Absolutely. You know, um, ACs, they, they just have this psychological impact. And a team may be led to believe that there is more ACs than there is. And I think the cooldown, the quick cooldown and cycle time of LB2 can just do that um, effect. And when the psychological gets warfare. open, lb 2s can actually do a lot of work. Those LB2 autocannons do get quite a few free crits on stripped armors. They're like machine guns that way. I was going to say, if I can add in, I think that we probably see some PPC action. I think that I would even say that it's possible that PPCs are at least one mech. I know we saw in later maps from last week, or later matches last week, but putting a PPC with no no worries to ammunition or like that, uh, it doesn't have to be any kind of physical PPC. I think a PPC from any family. Uh, more than likely ERs, if I had to put a guess. But on this map, I think that would be really useful. And it just, again, kind of like uh, what Vampy's saying, would be the, kind of the same psychological terror. Being, boom, I got hit by a PPC shot. Maybe it's maybe I only hit a couple of components. Maybe it wasn't that big of a hit. Maybe, you know, it wasn't it was just one shot. But that's enough to kind of be like, oh crap, there goes my ECM. Oh crap, I just got hit from a long range shot. I don't know where it came from. So I, I agree, Vampy. Uh, I think that would be kind of a, a crazy uh, uh, like power behind that kind of like focus fire. Looking forward in to these the sorts match. of uh, yeah, we're gonna, in comp play, I know that the tendency is towards ER PPC simply because you don't want to have that minimum range that you have with the heavy PPCs or the light PPCs. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to get extra spicy with it, you know what I'd I'd consider snub nose. Ooh, both of you at the same time. You know what's right if it's both of you said it. That's true. That's so fair. snub nose PPCs fair. are, and this is going hey, to be an awful metaphor somebody. for those that. Uh, play comp but bear with me here they're essentially energy weapon gauss rifles let me know if the audio well, they do sound have good, a everybody. fairly short effective range by default at i want to say 270 meters their damage drop off profile is gradual much the same way that a gauss rifles is and you could see maybe an er ppc or not an er ppc pardon snub nose ppc panther or dare i dream Ooh. the snub nose ppc irby that i knew we it expected. i knew you were gonna say it uh that's true i would love to see that as well <clears throat> But again, you have this. <laughs> we love our. You can still put out decent damage at the sort of engagement ranges we see from firing from Delta Four into Echo Four or Delta Five into Echo Five, and you don't have to worry about minimum range. We're kind of talking about the technicalities right now, just kind of give an idea before the match yep, actually I starts. I agree. I personally quite like Snap Nose. I got a lobby invite. Just so you guys know. All yeah, right. I got mine. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, um. What was I saying there? Okay, so I do run myself a street cleaner with two snub nose PPCs. And yeah, granted, it is quick playing, but I have managed to do good work with it, like 600, 700, 700 damage. I think people just don't expect snub noses to do a lot, but over time, it can rack up a lot of damage. I do think that given the... One of the restrictions in this tournament is that teams can only bring one hero mech per drop. So I don't know that the uh, street cleaner specifically would be the urban mech that would get tagged. But I absolutely agree that you can, there are a couple of Intersphere lights that can run, you know, one or two snuff nose PPCs quite you effectively. More? You got it, Mr. Brightside. You got it, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, Street Cleaner just isn't that great of an Urbi mech to be using oh, sorry. in Go back to the other screen. But I do think that with the engine cap <laughs> limit removed from the street cleaner, we may just be able to see a play out of it. So mm. um, it is quick enough to it's not casting for not drinking tequila, in my yet opinion. To do the pounding Professional, to snap by the way. that a street cleaner can carry. <laughs> and the thing is street cleaner anti NASCAR. Yep, so we do we don't really expect NASCAR in com, but that is just one possibility with the left mounted weapons of the street cleaner. Yeah, the unfortunately the one problem that the street cleaner has that a lot of the Urbi chassis have is just ideally in MechWarrior Online, you do not want to become a stick 
That is to say, you do not want to have the possibility for all of your weapon systems to be crit off. And Agreed. one of the big penalties that the urban mech chassis suffers, and it pains me to say this, but the urban mech arm mounts the vast majority of its weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, the R68 does have a single energy slot on its sent on its uh, right torso. The R63 does as well. Actually, the R63 might have two. I'd have to I'd have to go back and double check. But the vast majority of the urban mechs you tend to see in comp, with the exception of the K9, which I'll get talk, talk to in a moment, arm mount the vast majority of their firepower. And the arms on an urban mech are they're not the least durable things to ever grace the battlefield, but there's not a lot there. And it can be very easy to crit off the weapons and suddenly your street cleaner is without its glorious PPCs. Yeah, just a garbage can walking around. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a like the R60L, which is on top of being the um, uh, the largest energy boat of the urban mech is also the one that has those glorious AC20 quirks. Yeah, so that you fine. can technically get the best uh, inner sphere AC20 mech by quirks alone on a, on a 30 tonner. You take like one ton of ammo and nobody likes you. Well, now that you brought up AC20, I'm just thinking, will we see some teams do a mean build, like bring all the AC20s on a light mic? So you mentioned the Urby, and the other one I can think of is the Raven. So mm. maybe three Urbys and three Ravens with AC20s, wow. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love the meme, but especially in these lighter drops, I just, I could not justify the slow travel times of the AC-20s. Sure, when it hits, you could possibly leg the light mech in a single shot, but... Oops, don't need that one. There we go. For the Boom. time you are committing Boom. to the weapon, and the amount of player skill you have to commit to the weapon in That's order to get it to work. Not a beautiful it's mech. It's just, <laughs> I don't think it's really worth considering. Yeah, do you want a big punch or do you want reliability? Make sure. And I mean, oh, at least at my go. skill level, I want to offload uh, as so much of make it exciting. the skill checks do, that I can all. so that I can concentrate on, you know, the rest of the game. That's why, you if at all it. possible, I will run streaks. Uh, streak SRMs instead of SRMs. It's, uh, it's like, I don't want to have to aim. I want the computer to have to aim for me. Chance. <laughs> Right, I, think I don't really like streaks. A spicy like the way it, match. Works, it just feels weird when I run streaks. I can't feel like have fun. I'm not really doing much impact. I rather. Woo! Predict, here uh, we go! We're about to get started. Regular SRMs. So we've talked about. Father, I crave violence scenarios. so you guys can't see it. Here, we've I'll show you that little doodle up. It's kind of a little bit on real quick. This choices. is very important. How what about mech choices? Personally, I still would like to see the five, the spider five V. Father, I crave violence. Even though. Lurby. Over time, we do see that the 5v no has to tend know. not to perform very well not in right. com. So, what about you, Zane? What max do what do you think? Would you like to see? Well, I think the biggest problem I have with the Spider 5v is just that it's a 30 ton mech that's a, less durable than a commando, I'd guess, and you can only run the two weapon, two energy weapons on it. Sure, the capture quirks are glorious, but fair. Is it worth? I don't know. Um, as to mechs, I would like to see, I think you can get cataphracts to go fast enough for Solar City, and I do think that um, Solar City as a map very much uh, mitigates a lot of the problems that you run into with the cataphract frame, i.e. the fact that a lot of its mounts are to get started, everybody. You low ready? You're ready for this instead game? of those nice ready. high torso Woo! mounts we tend to want for comp. Mm -hmm. uh, the other frame that I could very much uh, would like to see here from these teams is the crab. It's a solid MPL brawler at 50 tons. It's durable as all heck. And the lack of jump jets aren't really going to hurt it on Solaris City. Right. So you mentioned a cataphract. So do you want a team to bring one cataphract? On and don't worry, I did take one? feedback from what you guys told me I'm last time. I do have control this time, so that way it's a little bit smoother. It's going to eat up a lot of tonnage from the other teammates. I think, I think it is 70 tons, so you probably can only afford the one. But... It can go fast enough to keep up with the lighter drops here, I think. And I do believe that for the amount of armor and amount of firepower, it can be worth um, 
almost playing the cataphract like a baby atlas if that makes sense soak damage all day mm -hmm. <clears throat> like the cat it's just this big scary whack of armor with a lbx 10 in the one arm that forces your opponent to deal with it we're ready i'm ready mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a balancing choice. Like, do you want to bring one big heavy mech with tons of smaller ones, or would you like to distribute your weight across everyone? Mm -hmm. And as we, so the, we're starting to see the teams are locked here. Um, team one is committed four mechs to their Alpha Lance and only two mechs to their Bravo. I'm a little. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a little curious because for team one, Alpha, there, two there. Alpha Drop is way in the back. It could be that they're going to commit their Alpha Lance to Kappa and try to catch the scouts from Bear Brawlers, but, well, I mean, it is a light drop. You can move fast enough for that to work. Um, from what I'm predicting, so Team 1 is going to be Bear Brawler, and they've committed All right, here we go. Alpha. We're ready, What I'm thinking is Alpha get is going to be... Get this match ready. Bad. Let's get started. Yeah, Lance, while Bravo... Uh, with the All right, we'll be on top of it. Bravo, Bravo is going to be, be on top of it 100%. So it's going to be the fast max going out to check where the enemy is are, and then Alpha, Lance is going to move into position to react to those information. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Go, match started. Island's Dragoons dropping much more conventionally here with the four lances in the four mechs in Charlie Lance and the two mechs in Bravo Lance. So, much more typical uh, deployment from the Highland Dragoons. Let's see what Bear Brawlers bring to the table yeah. as we load into the match. Right, I'll be expecting MPLs, SRMs, and maybe one or a few ACs from Bear Brawlers. So, mm -hmm. what do you think Dragoons are going to bring? Oh, I'm I'm expecting pure MPLs. My like dark horse pick is either, as we discussed, the snub nose PPC, or mm -hmm. perhaps the an LBX ten, or perhaps Ooh, an LBX five. City. I don't know that the LBX two is really worth it. The extra heat, sure, it's a ton lighter, but I just I don't know that the extra heat is worth it. And we're flying. But those oh. bigger tonnages of uh, LBX, auto we're, we're going through. Oh my maybe goodness! Maybe we see one of those. I think we're gonna see a thumper. I'm pretty sure they're gonna cheat one in. Oh. <laughs> no, no, just me. All right, here we go. So we're in a match. Yes. In. All right, to go over real quick. So looking at Cameron Highlanders, uh, or Dra Highlander Dragoons is what their actual name is. We have a Hunchback, Vindicator, Vindicator, Fleet 17, Bushwhacker, and Bushwhacker. Ooh. And a from armor. the lot of uh, Bear Cavalry, or as they're called here, the 256 bear cavalry we have a vindicator a commando an urban mech canine a bushwhacker 1x with rack twos a roughneck 1c and a crab 27 so a bit of a mixed bag really yep interesting mech choices definitely now we didn't get a chance Ooh, to okay. discuss it in the pregame but uh, we can see from bear cavalries they did end up going with the canine as their hero urban mech and the big reason for that is not only is the UMK9 the one that can boat the most MPLs uh, with five, but it also can zombie two of those medium pulse lasers in its center torso. So even if it does lose, it loses two fifths or three fifths rather of its firepower. Already we're arm. seeing some action though for coming from Amarok. It's Fleet 17 putting a little tracer shot to the commando just to let him know he was there, then banking off, not really wanting to engage just yet. But we see both teams are very close to each other already. Oh, so I do want to call out Mr. Brightside's build here. So typically with a Vindicator, I was Command, I saw the Vindicator and I admit I was expecting MPLs. It's running two flamers, three machine guns, and an MRM-40. Wow. That could sandpaper its way through the CTs of a lot of the lighter mechs that we could see here. I did want to comment on that same note. So the Bushwhackers coming in from Cameron Highlanders or Highlander Dragoons, it's actually two of them, or both of them have a lot of LBX-10s and Snubnose PPC, just so you know. <laughs> This is a good time to remind our audience that we have no inside information. We yeah, were 100% we speculating we were just when we talked about the uh, stub nose there. Some tracer shots coming in from those bushwhackers using their yeah, sub nose yeah, PPCs and a first artillery strike landing on Bear Cavalry. Good damage being brought out. It looks like a little bit of tracer fire. Medium Pulse is trying to at range to put some damage on that Roughneck. The Roughneck not being deterred is pushing in as well as the Vindicator. It looks like Bear Brothers is doing what they want. They want that brawl. Now, the, so the, the Roughneck there sporting that EC20, so props to Inta for that, but if you put that Roughneck in the face of that Hunchback or any of the sort of squishier heavies that we saw here from Cameron's Islanders, you're going to open them up. 
up. Real quick, the Roughneck did go down, but not to be taken down too lightly. As Haji running the Hunchback is trying to put more games in, taking a leg on the Vindicator, but definitely down as well. The Vindicator going down in quick measure. This is a pretty dangerous and disgusting match already. As Bex are flying bit by bit. Bear Brawl is still together while they do have a flank attack from the Vindicator coming by Succubus. It looks like shots are already being traded out. We already have a, another Vindicator violated by Overrain down to 43%, but not to be stirred. Pickle and Derp are getting taken down with another beautiful artillery strike coming in as well. The shots are raining out. We end up another Irby. Another man goes down to Crab, guard being piloted by Gaten Phoenix. Looks like the Irby is trying to escape. It does get taken as well. This Bravo is already coming down to the end. It's only Commando and the Kuriyami piloting away, trying to get some moves, trying to get past the enemy team. Looks like we are going to be have to see a limited scrap as the commander is both trying to engage and both trying to tip out. See if they can take out Orbit Ray. They do see that's weak and mech spreading the damage a little bit more. Being tracked by that Fleet 17. Will they be able to get it away? Or is it too late already for this dear little commando? They are dipping. They are diving. They are hiding amongst the shadows. And when the 1v1 engagement, they are taking that Fleet 17. But that Vindicator by Orbit Rain, not to leave the poor Amarok alone, is already coming in to assist. That commander does have to disengage. Will it be able to make it in the corner? It does! Oh my goodness. Look at the quick moves on this commando. Still taking a pot shots. The Fleet 17 not wanting to lose its day delicious dinner. The Commando saying that's just a Fleet right by itself. It goes in it again, but the other Vindicator, a much healthier Vindicator, comes in by Succubus and is trying to put in more hits. This poor Commando is taking all the hits and all the damage. Look at this little fight. I love the little iconography on the back of his head to let people know I'm still here as it gets taken down, ladies and gentlemen, those beyond the binary. Woo! Now, what we saw there was just a bit of an overcommittal from the Bear Brawlers, and an excellent receive on the part of Highlands control. Dragoons. Because essentially what you saw there is, as soon as the fight broke out, the Dragoons backed off and took a more favorable position. But then Bear Brawlers, eager to get in the fight, started charging in. The but they didn't charge in as a blob. Resources. They kind of charged in as a slug or a snake or some other sort of elongated form of animal that my metaphor is failing here. <laughs> but that gave... The Dragoons, a That's very a easy target to focus on. Yep, not to add that Dragoons landed a nice RD strike on Babylon's and actually about collect the collective amount, probably around 20% of um, Babylon's, while Dragoons remain healthy. But I would like to state that. Bear Brawlers actually managed to turn the tables around a little. We do see Cameron Highlanders, their health dipping down below um, Bear Brawlers actually. But as you say, Cameron, they just took the better position and they could focus fire on Bear Brawlers just that much better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was like a very well played out fight. But we, the other thing we did see that was interesting from... Uh, Bear Brawlers, if we can switch back to our map view here, is they hard committed to Kappa. Ooh, it was a good match. We want to be on map two. All right. They hard committed to Kappa, which I do think was, while it didn't end up working out for them, was the right call. Because essentially what they did is, if they were a bit, if Bear Brawlers were a bit faster off the mark, or maybe just a little bit more lucky, they could have caught out the light mechs from Highlands Dragoon as they were going to cap that point. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit curious on their choice to land on Bravo Lens. If, right, so the thing right now is if they're all going to go to Kappa, why would they not drop Alpha and Charlie, but they chose Alpha and Bravo? I assume it's a, it's a bluff or it's a, a bit of a mislead. You put your fast mechs in Bravo and then, but by Deploying mechs in Bravo Lands, you do force the Dragoons to... Uh, up until the fight actually starts and the positions start to get committed, by putting your mechs in Bravo Lands, you at least bluff the possibility of pushing Theta or pushing Epsilon instead of pushing Kappa. Mm. Yep, I didn't see that actually. Mm. Like, the, the Bear Rollers light mechs that dropped in Bravo immediately did join up with their main body at Kappa. But because they had to lock first, putting them in Bravo Lance lets them kind of bluff the position and bluff the strategy a little bit. Um, personally, at least, for, to go further on that line, I would have actually dropped my heavy mechs in Charlie Lance. It doesn't seem like. To further commit to, oh, I'm going to bluff on the conventional positioning. 
doesn't seem like uh, Highlander Dragons was was bothered by it, or maybe they just didn't consider it into their plan. They stayed pretty grouped together, and yeah, like I said, they kept a pretty dominant position, staying grouped in D four with only a little bit of flanking from them. And that's when I say flanking, I mean like within the same grid zone kind of flanking it was uh, definitely a pretty hard push to make into when they were grouped out like that. And those artillery strikes, two of those were delicioso. Well, you can see actually, um, it's conversation points like this that make me wish that we could do an instant replay. But uh, yeah. one of the things you can see that Armrock and the Fleet 17 did for Highlands Dragoons is as soon as the fight... Sorry, I'm just going to purge our uh, art here for a second. So as the fight was breaking out around Echo 3, the Bear Brawlers were grouped up right around here and pushing through. And what I thought was really clever that you saw from uh, Armrock... I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, by the way. <laughs> Probably in not. The Fleet 17. Terrible. As soon as the fight broke out, he <laughs> dipped behind the building here in Delta 3. And what that does is not only does it allow him to break radio contact, as Bear Brawlers pushed up, he could just, or rather they could just dip back around and they had beautiful back shots for the Fleet 17, which... While I didn't check if they were running uh, six, medium, six, six small pulse and a small laser, or I've seen some pilots, if they're very confident, running seven small pulse. But the flea loves that sort of unfettered, distracted access to the backside of a battle mech. Oh, it definitely was happy. With definitely all was of those happy boy. pinpoint lasers, you can strip off components very quickly. Cool. Oh. Yeah. And if you just manage to land a shot, a good alpha on the back. Uh, rear CT, it definitely puts a lot of pressure on the receiving pilot. Like he's gonna think, "Oh, my back is open. Just one more shot, and I'll be taken out. I gotta be turning around." And when he's turning around, he's gonna be exposing his rear to the front of the enemy. It's just a, a huge mess. That flea definitely did work uh, for high position to be in to have a flea on your backside. Now, uh, just as the teams were locked up, we saw bear brawlers committing four to their bravo lance and two to their charlie lance and then the same alpha charlie split from highlands dragoons so i think what we're going to see is highlands dragoons push epsilon and then over to theta and probably a similar response from yep. or sorry bear brawlers push well, epsilon and roll to theta, more to come and a similar response that we saw from highlands dragoons where they're going to send kind of a scout mech to theta but set up their main body kind of in that delta 5 echo 5 choke point Oh, that's the wrong color. Mm -hmm. All right, so you mentioned Woo! that there. you would so fast for Bear Brothers to drop the Heavy Max in Charlie in the first drop. I personally would mix it up, actually. So Alpha is going to hold three Heavy ones and then one fast one. So you mm. can just run to Kappa, get an Intel, and just report. Oh, we are loading into game here, folks. Where do our sponsors? Cappuccinos. Drink them! They're good for you. The drop ships Question mark. In. Yep. There they are, flying in. And from Bear Calver, we actually have ourselves a Commando Assassin, an Irby, going for the two lights once again. A Roughneck and yet another Roughneck. So that's three Roughnecks officially done by Bear Calvary and a Phoenix Hog. And yeah, from nice. Commander's High Lanes, we see the Flea 17 again, a Roughneck 2A, that is the energy boat, sporting uh, three medium pulses and two LB10s, a Vulcan 5T, another Bushwhacker 1X, so I believe that's both Bushwhackers, or all three Bushwhackers taken for the Dragoons, a second Roughneck 2A, and the Commando 1D. From the weapon loadouts, I'm seeing a mixture of SRMs, a few pulses, and some AC-20, once again coming from one of the Roughnecks. I think Monsu Cloudburst has the AC-20, so I'm looking for some big shots coming from that mech. And from the Dragoons, we're seeing a lot of LB-10s, the Snubnose PVC on the Bushwhacker again, and then hey, I'm checking this here. on this fleet. I gotta, I gotta know. <laughs> Interesting positioning from the Dragoons. Mm. So everyone's just fighting over Epsilon, and we got the first few shots ringing out at Armrock in the fleet. Absolutely, and we see Stuff You Fear is coming in for an interesting flank. Will they run into the entire team, or will they just get enough? Ooh, the commando doesn't notice. The commando doesn't notice the other commando. I feel like that's an oxymoron, but we're going to keep going. So we have a couple of shots trying to take out the UAV. First damage done to the UAV. Oh, no. Will they be able to survive without the UAV? We'll find out in just a moment. But not to be defeated, look at that high ground position coming from Camera Highlands as they're able to rain shots down upon the Epsilon signature. First artillery strike coming out once again. A couple of UAVs going up as well. So the enemy team, or uh, Bear Calvary, is 
completely scattered out as this time being. Monsoon Copper has taken a lot of damage from that first opening fire. And it looks like they cap it and they give it up. Hmm. We have seen the red after you did I'm just saying, we're gonna see some little bit of like action as we see a commando and assassin try to chase down that fleet 17. They wanna see if they can get early pick because then the command points will be even more of a clearer, bigger lead. The assassin is still trailing behind. The commander though is on top of it and takes out the leg! Amarok, oh no! Amarok tries to put a couple more hits but gets finally taken down. But not to be mistaken as we see, Epsilon is a hot zone! As we see more fire coming out, Roughneck still staying alive, trying to put in more shots. The Bushwhacker taking a considerable amount of damage, but they're still trading. They're still putting in their hits as well. Look, they are trying to try to focus down the Roughneck or the Bushwhacker. Commando stuff you fear, trying to put in a little bit of distraction fire, giving the team of uh, 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 Dra Highlander Dragons to be able to push in. Losing some components on one of their own Roughnecks, but another beautiful artillery train coming out! Oh man, I hope they're playing those artillery guys more money as the Phoenix Hawks goes down for Mr. Brightside, that Roughneck not too far behind. The Commando trying to make another burst fire and almost gets taken out itself. The Roughneck re-engaged and we have two weak Roughnecks coming in for Bear Calvary. Will they be able to take out the Roughneck or I think they are going to lose it? Yet another artillery strike coming in. All the humanity! The Vulcan is pushed in trying to separate the fire. It's just a Roughneck and a Ur Irby left between them all. The Roughneck is going in. Oh, and finally we see another mech get taken down. But it looks like the Roughneck gets taken down quickly as well. More shots coming out. Who is left? Looks like uh, Highlander Dragoons is pretty damaged. Can the last three mechs of Bear Calvary pull it off? We see a lot of shots still ringing in. We see the Commando and the Vulcan trying to put some more hits, trying to keep them at bay. We see a lot of really close fighting coming from that Roughneck. How is that Roughneck still alive? Oh my goodness! Look at it, it's still tanking. Its neck is so rough, it can barely take a hit. Or can it take all the hits? That's the true question. Irby and Assassin still working that Roughneck. The... Ooh, the Roughneck, okay, they're all grouped up. This is such a go back and forth fight. Ooh, ooh another mech getting taken out. Self-destruction from Haji. Oh my goodness, look at these shots coming in. Over Rain finally getting taken out. Another self-destruction. It's 2v1. Will Bear Calvary pull it off? It's just a Vulcan versus a relatively healthy Commando. And a, where's the other mech? Where is the, oh, there is the Assassin coming back in. Little Hurt taking the hits and deciding to disengage so that way it doesn't take all the hits. And there it goes to Bear Calvary. We have a one to both match, everybody. Woo! I will say this wow. is a wow. very interesting Taking match to start. We did see Dragoons do a 3-3 three, three split and from Look the minimap I thought that the uh, Babrolas, wait, I'm not too sure if I'm reading it correct, Hollis. Blue is... Blue is the Dragoons. Yeah. yeah. Alright, okay. So uh, Babrolas did a 3-3 three, three split and then I was expecting them to catch the two light mechs that were entering into the Fox 6 area, but they enemy. didn't seem to have done it. Um, and then the fight broke out at Absalon, and we saw that um, Babrolas, they committed two mechs to chase off that flea and managed to take it out, but Dragoons, they had the right response. I believe that flea would have made a call that, hey, there's two guys on me, push, because it's gonna be a five versus four. So we see Dragoons pushing. Um, it's just great fight there, good artillery strikes, and Bear Brawlers, this is such a nail-biting fight. They managed to just pull things into their favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we saw there was um initially at least when the as the fight broke out, we did see uh bear or dragoons set up on I believe it's this building. Actually, wait, no, it's probably. I believe it's that building. Um, but they set themselves up with those LB10s and with those some of those PPCs to try to get Overwatch to. Actually, no, it's probably this one. To try to get Overwatch to Epsilon. But not only were Bear Brawlers able to get the point by getting that early pick on the flea. It forced the Highland Dragoons to what push a fight. What a fight. Wow. to try to get the initiative back. Because if they sort of kept their initial position and kept trading, the Bear Cavalry had those two very, mo three really very mobile mechs in the Commando, the Assassin, and the UMK9. And they would have been able to win out on the, uh, on the eventual push. Also, we're probably going to need to swap maps. 
I was going to say, do you feel like, real quick, uh, that light mech getting taken out early on, do you feel like that's what was the proverbial nail in the coffin so early on, like, or at least the foresight of that from Highlander Dragoons? I, I do think that's what forced the decision, yeah, losing that light mech early. Because you no longer have really the capacity to contest the drop. Personally, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I mean, I'm not rooting for any other team. I'm, I just root for good games. But now that both teams have won a match, that means they have everything. They have the morale. They have the momentum. Both teams have every right to win this next match as well. So that just means we're going to have better games here on out. Yep. And from what we see, oh, this that was great. Pretty, thank you, Rose. Thanks for stopping by. You probably won't hear this. It's five minutes delay. So but I thank think you. Swiss tournament. We're hey, see, one butter. Butler. Um, excuse me. Butter? Yeah, butter. <laughs> think of people Good to see you again. Find it out. Indeed. Indeed. So let's move along to our second map here. Canyon Network, a hot map as we have experienced ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do you think teams are going to be bringing oh, NPL? Not a tequila, sadly, but it's okay. We'll have to get past it's, it. It's always a rough conversation. You know, do you just say, okay, you know what? I know I'm a good enough pilot to manage my heat cap and deal with the, the MPLs, or do you sort of, you know, know you know know thyself so to speak and accept that it's like okay yeah i'm not a good enough pilot to run mpls to their full efficiency on these very hot maps and do you instead commit to these sort of alternate weaponries like the srms or like we saw a lot here from the highlands dragoons the lvxs and the sub -nose. personally i know i'm not a good enough pilot to run mpls to their full effectiveness on those hotter maps so i would like to see like the Assassin 21, we saw it here from, we saw it from uh, the Bear Brawlers on last match, but the SRM Assassin is a beautiful mech to have on Canyon Network. And the other big nice reason <laughs> I'm Whoop. hesitant to run MPLs is the most important piece of equipment to have on Canyon Network is jump jets. That's fair. That's very fair. Yep, uh, as you say, important piece of equipment is the jump jets on Canyon Network because it affords you get much more ability through the ridges and the ravines and um, jump jets actually work kind of in detriment to MPLs because MPLs generally they're hot, you need to cool down and when you're burning your jets, you, don't just, you just don't cool down good enough. Mm -hmm. So both teams lock. We saw uh, we saw sort of what we expected: heavy Charlie drops from both teams with two mechs and Bravo Lance. Let's get into match. Bravo? I thought I saw the team one in Alpha. Did I Ooh. see that one? You might have. I I caught it very quickly before we jumped into the loading screen. <laughs> sure. the map. So you might be right. And if we do see the <laughs> two from Alpha Lance on team one, we might see a Kappa sneak. I'm just normally, uh, running over to blue, just so you know. Yeah. Normally, on this map, uh, Kappa is kind of considered... Oh, you're right. I was actually wrong for both teams. Ooh, baby! Both teams dropping two mechs in two contest Kappa. I love these mechs already. Uh, I know we haven't seen the actual thing pop up yet, but I'm already seeing an awesome being pilot by White Tiger. Woohoo! A Fafnir, another awesome... I think we might be seeing some... Ooh, am I seeing it? Learn, people! Learns! Oh my goodness! And I'm also seeing a wolfhound and a uh, spider as well. <laughs> so from Bear Cavalry, oh we're seeing gosh. a pair of Vulcan 5Ts, a pair of Thunderbolts with medium pulses and SRM6s and Artemis, and then a quick draw IV4, and the Victor 91A running two, an Ultra 10 and an Ultra 20. And jump jets. Beautiful, beautiful jump jets on that Victor. In the Vulcan's going to hit and grab Theta. And some movement over here as well. The team movement is a little Ooh. bit confusing from Team 2. We're seeing some big shots though coming from the Heavy Goss and that Spider being able to put up no UAV but being able to keep a couple locks for those awesome to rain some damage. Now the enemy team from talking about Bear Calvary is aware that the Ursum Lerm action and more Lerms coming in. Not actually getting a hit on that one but still keeping them at wear. <gasps> Monsu Cloudburst also being aware getting some oh some dangerous back shots. That rear arm is already ready to pop. That left arm is also cored out. 
Wow, we're already seeing some heavy hits coming in. That factor also puts some good damage against one of the folks as well. More missiles coming out. UAVs going up to scout for the targets. I'm going to have to watch everyone. I'm going to have to look at the skies for this match. Oh, and more matches going to the victory. And Artillery Strike. How did Artillery... Oh, from the spider from Haji. Putting Artillery Strike on Monsoon Clappers. I don't even think they were aware of that shot as they get hit once again. But more close engaged fights coming in from the Vulcans. Actually disengaging with the uh, Fafnir. Fafnir getting a little bit of Artillery Strikes on its own. Might have clipped a little bit of the Vulcan. But I think it might have been worth it as that factor goes down to 89% for that one. We have a spider in midst of Baron Cavalry. Are they on the same team or did he defect? And oh my goodness, as we probably thought it was going to happen, that Victor gets taken out from that Lurm onside and artillery strikes. Looks like they are trying to push off that spider, trying to put some damage. The Vulcans, however, are wanting to get in the middle of it. Sally, that gotcha coming in, taking out Mr. Brightside. The Thunderbolt also coming in, trying to focus the path here, but it's taking so many Lurms from those two awesomes just sitting on the high, high ground. Oh, and another mech goes down. Thunderbolt being taken out. Another Thunderbolt and a quick draw coming in. Still trying to focus that Fafnir. That Fafnir has to be taking damage. It's left legs ready to pop, but they're still trying to open that torso, and I think they will get it. And oh, but not before another mech goes down. Those Goss is hitting it so hard that Fafnir does finally get taken down. So we have one mech down for Highlander Dragoons, but three mechs left from Bear Calvary. Will Bear Calvary going to go through it? They're doing the smart move. They're pushing those Lurmers, being like, okay, enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. I will take you down. As they move on, one of the uh, Awesomes take a couple of hits, but not to be disappointed, Highlander Dragoons is using the Commando and their Wolfhound to keep pushing those hits. It looks like there is a little bit of scatter fire. There's only three mechs left. The other Vulcan is trying to get there, but I believe it might be Legs Ladies. Oh my goodness, who's actually going to win this? The Thunderbolt trying to square up again. Also, trying to keep that close range because they know that's where a lot of damage goes. But that snub nose PVC coming in from that also does take it out. Oh my goodness. The quick draw now being hit from every which way. And all that's left is the Vulcan from Bear Calvary. Will this Vulcan have the dream or will it parallel down? Trying to bait out some attacks, trying to maybe disable the LRMs. It wasn't late, but now it is taking all the hits. And not before Amarok self destructs, trying to get that kill the Wolfhound too. And there we have it. Four mechs down left for Highland Dragon, six mechs destroyed by Bear Cavalry. So I think we can call that drop the Chaotic Harmony Special. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely one we could go for, absolutely. Lerms are putting the game way before Kato Harkamli, but definitely it is a little more coined at this point as we saw the awesome display of missiles come into play. Now, the smart move from Highland Dragoon here was not to, you know, play the quick play special and leave those awesomes without any way to defend themselves. They did have a couple of their faster mechs hanging back, but uh, Orbit Reigns wow, awesome had a pair of medium lasers, as you called the... White Tigers awesome had the snub nose PPC, so it's not like they were completely defenseless. Oh, but just not. 120 LRM tubes is a hard thing to argue with over that much open ground. Yeah, I'm just trying to take in a beautiful play by Dragoons. It's insane seeing those two awesomes just learning down Bear Brawlers. I think that caught me by surprise. I didn't actually expect. Learns to be brought here. Ho oh, ho ho, White Tiger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to give you an I idea, mean, the White Tiger pulled 819 damage with the other awesome pulling 606 with the Orbit Rain. Maybe all over the place as far as the damage goes, but you definitely saw the results of it. Wow. Yeah, wow. we definitely did. That was that was a match and a half, but. Oof. That's gotta be a. Well, wait, didn't Bear Brawlers do. LRMs in week uh, two as well. Mining Collective, if I remember collective? correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So really, they should have seen this coming. They have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm just left speechless by how that match went. Now, yeah, we were no. talking about we were talking about earlier about like you know things we don't see too often like weapon groups stuff like that. We should have said Lerms because we don't definitely don't see a lot of Lerms at least in these like tier matches. So it was kind of cool to see it, but man, is it devastating when it's done right? I guess we we should have called Lerms. Um, we should have I do want to just uh, compliment Hajj Hajj, the the spider pilot, for not revealing themselves, able to hold those locks, but also when they took that suicide dive. They had a narc beacon, oh, and I have oh. to assume that the the suicide dive into bear ballers that was on the back half of the fight, which they got away with, I might add, was to spread to around the glory that is the narc beacon. I was gonna say they only got down to I think about 67, 68 percent before they were able to dip out. So yeah, definitely worth. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
<laughs> well, I think Bamboo is like in the midst of the chaos, they banded together and I thought, okay, let's just push the numbers. Um, it's a right call, definitely, but I just think they did it too late. But a lot of, of damage course, was done. Yeah. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I would presume that in the midst of being bombed by those missiles, uh, they're probably in panic mode to think clear enough that they gotta push the learners. <laughs> Talking about psychological warfare. <laughs> as much as we talk about, um, oh, you know, it was a learn drop. You know, the, not to discredit the work that uh, White White Tiger and Orbit Rain did. Great name for the the guy piloting the LRM mech, by the way. But it's not Orbit like Rain. Uh, yeah. Highland Dragoons committed their entire drop to this LRM strategy. Oh, yes, they did, did commit. Uh, I think 180 tons across the two awesomes oh, plus another 30 the with the spider. But they had the Fafnir to help push back any anybody trying to engage on them. The yeah. awesome had close range weapons that they could use. They also had the Wolfhound and the Commando to, if nothing else, make enough of a tar pit of the brawl that the awesomes could just stand at the far corner of the map, and, ah, far corner of the map, and make good use of those sixty LRM tubes piece. Mm -hmm. Do you think luck had a factor here? Because if I'm not wrong, the Lermas from Vivian's drop in Charlie Lens and the fight broke up around Absalon Theta. But what if Bears had just gone to Kappa instead? I would point. say that it's less of a luck thing and more that the. Um... Bear Pilots wanted to brawl. I mean, that's that's something we've yeah. seen from him a couple of times. White uh, 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 Highlander Dragoons definitely had the same plan like like the last two drops. They wanted to do something where they were grouped up together and it worked out for them because they had an engagement plan. I mean, both teams had an engagement plan, both put it into effect. It just, in this case, Highlander Dragoons pulled it off. But um, in, as opposed, just to get back to the luck question, I think it was more a thing of Highlander Dragoons being having the skill to make their own luck in this sense. Because even if Bear Brawlers had gone Kappa Theta, which I think would have been all the awesomes from team or from the Highland Dragoons had to do is position themselves on what we have internally at least been calling the Pickle Ridge. But this area here, and you know, if the fight was breaking out more where we expected on the Theta Kappa side of the map, instead of boxing up in this corner where they ended up doing so, they just need to push up a little and end up on the ridge, and then they have fire lines on those points. So, I think the more interesting question is, if you're Highland, Highlanders or Goons, do you assume you can run it back? I mean, there are mechs for archers. Like, I mean, you could cut out some normally not run mechs to do so. Obviously, they only have one awesome at their disposal if they don't want to bring it in a later drop. So, yeah, I would say it's doable, for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesomes, I mean, the catapult. So the classic LRM mech of the Inner Sphere. Um, Zane, uh, can you put your name in the, the the map strategy thing? Just name yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry, how do I do that? Like in the user list, you just put your name. Oh, okay. Are right, you going to fix it, Vampy? Um, okay, I'm see if I can kick these two guys out, you know? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> all right, so here we go. We got over here. We got... All right, to go over real quick. So coming from Bear Calvary, we have a Fafnir, a Cyclops, a Catapult, a Hunchback, and a Flea and a Commando. Running back to Flea and the Commando once again. And from Highlands Dragoons, we have a pair of Warhammers. One... Or sorry, three Warhammers. Uh, one BW and two R6s. A pair of Vulcan 5Ts and a Champion 1B. Real quick, I want to point out that Bear Cavalry has brought some Lerms of their own. The Cyclops is bringing two lr 15s with four SRM 6s and a tag with medium laser. And so is the, what was it? The Hunchback, actually, bringing two lr 10s and six medium lasers. So a little bit mixed bags. And we already see some capping going on towards Zeta. Will we have an engagement? 
Mm -hmm. So, Ooh, yes, we do. Succubus's champion is running uh, three rotary twos and three mediums. The Black Widow is running four AC fives. So again, we're seeing this very, very long range drop. Oh, and we're the... seeing the fire coming from these long range drops. You see the Lurms put into action, <laughs> trying to hit that Warhammer coming from Haji, trying to put some damage back in. We saw a little bit of scrap pick up from the Light Max and the Light Medium Max coming from the Vulcans hit versus the Fleet 20 and Commando. But it looks like they're disengaging and they're trying to actually help their teammates out with these Lurm Maxes. The champion is forced to maybe un favorable position from where they are. They do have the rotaries to help them out. Mormus is coming out trying to pelt that warm of warm and the champion are kind of stuck of where they are, but doesn't mean that the majority of the team can't put out hurt as Lung Butler is using their large lasers to at least some effect, trying to at least put a little bit of damage as another lock comes onto them. Taking a little bit of scratch damage and a beautiful, once again, my goodness, how the dragons, your artillery strikes, you trained those pilots or you trained those engineers, didn't you? As we got another artillery strike, gotta do a little bit of damage, more of a zoning tool, it looks like. Lurm still going in, wish, wish, wish indeed, as we see that the mechs are still kind of hiding behind the rocks here. Now, interesting to note is that we have one cap for Theta and one cap for Epsilon at this point. So technically, Highland Dragons are in the lead, but for how long? As the Lurms are just going back and forth. Any commentary so far is there. We're just seeing some trading of pot shots right now. Given how quick the turnaround was, I have to assume this was planned by Bear Cavalry. They had always planned, you know, on Team 1, we're going to bring the Lurms. Ooh, another two strike. But it, it really like does kind of look like they took things personal. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, possibly does look like the Warhammers are trying to put a little bit of the right shots. We have a little bit of damage. It looks like both teams are now. Bear Cavalry has two mechs. Three mechs have gone to 80%. One is close to approaching 70. While we do have a mech that's gone to 70 with the champion from uh, uh, Highlander Dragoons. But most of the mechs between the 90 and ooh, three mechs in the 70 range. Looks like these Lurms are actually putting in a good effect as we see a Vulcan try to get pretty close. Will they be able to put some damage as we see the Bap there getting hit? But boom! Goes that Vulcan. Another Vulcan coming from a side flank trying to put a little damage, trying to save their teammate. But before it was too late, looks like that Bear's company is getting what they want. They're pushing on the other mechs, but not before Succubus of Fafnir, the most weakened mech. The champion being railed from that champion. The champion pushing and trying to get that kill in the cycle. Then does indeed get it. That is a good amount of the Lurms already taken out. Will they be able to get the champion? Or will they be able to lose it? No, the champion does get out with that hunchback. Those two Warhammers still keeping the long range with their missiles and, or no, excuse me, lasers and cannon shots. The, oh, the river will be filled with oil and blood this season, everybody. As the Warhammer in the far back, the hero mech still trying to put in a couple of damage. Four AC5 doing work. Looks like Bear Brothers decided to engage that Warhammer, trying to outrange, but the catapult is taking so many shots from those two other Warhammers, down to 25%. How is it still alive? Oh my goodness, maybe it is indeed a cat that's inside of that catapult with nine lives to spare, but finally getting taken down with that fight. The Warhammer still being chased around with the commando and not able to get the shots. The Vulcan for Ember are coming in to assist. The Flea getting some beautiful black shots. That rear armor is ready to go. That Flea senses it. It wants it. It is holding that shot and taking it out. So we have two Warhammers coming in from Highland Dragons and a Vulcan versus the Fleet 20 and the Commando coming in from Bear Calvary. The Commando is pretty weakened and it seems like the Warhammers are trying to notice that. The Vulcan is trying to peel back so the Warhammers can actually get into range. This fight has gone back and forth and we've seen die mechs die on both sides. Who am going to survive? The Commando is disengaging though. The Fleet 20 is still trying to engage the fight. Will the Commando re-engage? It sure does. Trying to get a little bit closer in the fight. Fleet 20 just trying to use its moves. The Commando wall climbing. Is that allowed? Oh my goodness. Gets into the rear armor of the Warhammer as it's gotten close, but not to be disappointed. The Vulcan does come in with a good shot. The Fleet 20 has to disengage. The Commando is trying to get some shots. They're just working that Warhammer from lung better. The rear armor is gone. The left and right arms are cored. Oh, but the leg from the Commando finally gets taken out. Oh no. The Flea Mech. Where is the flea mech? Pickle derp, pickle derp. Can you do it? Is your bride good enough? And unfortunately, it does self destruct. With Highland Dragoons taking this match as well. Woo! For some reason, in this today's match, I keep losing track of who's blue and who's red. <coughs> um, but when Bear Brothers, the blue team, they pushed up to Charlie 5 to get. The two packs that were sitting there, um, I think they made a good push, but then as the match developed, they actually were exposing their backs to Dragoons as they were trying to collapse in on the Black Widow, and I think that might be the downfall there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing that I think let down um, Highland or Bear Cavalry's attempt at the LRM drop is they spread their LRMs because they had 10 tubes on the Hunchback, uh, 30 tubes on the Cyclops, and that was about it. 
So you just didn't quite have the critical mass that you would need to punish those mistakes. Like part of the reason the awesomes worked for the Dragoons was the fact that it was just 120 tubes spread across two mechs. Two admittedly mm -hmm. very heavy mechs, but it was more firepower spread across or not spread across as many mechs. So you had a higher concentration of the firepower on any individual target. Yeah. Yep, and I will add that the wow. awesome eight R do does carry good missile quirks that just mm -hmm. makes the limbs uh, perform better. Um, yep, so you pointed out a good point that bear brawlers they spread their limbs out. I would pretty much prefer to see just one mag that is dedicated to carrying limbs. I think that would um, be, be a much better choice for bear brawlers. Mm -hmm. And. We not to downplay um, Lung Butter, Sir Epic Poner, and Haji in the three Warhammers, the six R's and the Black Widow, put in an amazing amount of work with those gauze rifles oh, and those yeah. ER needs. Once they were able to sort of get in range of the fight, they were able to shoot back enormously or incredibly effectively to these LRM mechs. Whereas when we saw the reverse of the matchup, I don't think those awesomes got touched until that very final push. Yeah. I was gonna say real quick to shout out uh, the light mechs for Bear Cavalry did the most damage and did uh, obviously incredible work. The Warhammers did the most work as far as the uh, Highlander Dragoons team. So it was interesting mm -hmm. to see that kind of discrepancy as far as the damage goes. It was, it was a cool fight though. Oh yeah. And I will say that at least visually, LRMs do make for a much better show than uh, a lot of MPLs sometimes. Like, there's just something glorious about seeing those missiles arcing up and then arcing back down, you know? Yeah, so let's get into our final drop of the night. Or no, yes, final drop. I know, it feels like we just started. <laughs> <laughs> Very prompt drops from both teams here. Uh, we're only 13 minutes in. Yeah, that's just awesome. So, final drop, we're going to be on Frozen City Night, a cool map. What are we going to expect in here? So, at least internally, we've been talking about um, sort of two major strategies, but most of them rely on setting up a gun line at Charlie 5. You have decent oversight to the through the city and through the road that you know that Bravo Lance and potentially even Charlie Lance from Team 1 has to push through to get to you. And we do see on this map the sort of magnetism point that a lot of the teams fight around is just behind the dropship here at Charlie 4. Now, Theta Cap is a little out of the way, but I feel like if you're Team 2, you can get the... Uh, starting from your Charlie Lance, if you take a fast enough mech, you can get the initiative to get the double cap and force Team 1 to push into you. Yeah. If I'm Team 1... Oh, after you, Bambi. Oh no, just go ahead. I'm just, I was just agreeing. <laughs> if I'm Team 1, um, I want to put a very fast mech in Charlie Lance, and I might do what uh, Bear Cavalry has done here, and put a light mech in Alpha Lance to sneak around back and either get the back cap or otherwise make a distraction of myself. But I'm going to put one mech, one or two light mechs in Charlie Lance to contest or take Theta if I can. I'm going to put most of my tonnage in Bravo Lance, push through to Kappa, and set up a firing line kind of here. In that Bravo 3, Bravo 4, there's a nice set of hills that gives me some decent cover. And I want to force the enemy team to push into me. Now, we saw... Oh! Um, I think this might be a redrop. I thought I saw seven players for uh, Highlanders. All right, let's take a look. Maybe it was a bug. <laughs> I think from what I saw is Highlanders had one in Alpha Lens, three in Bravo, and two in Charlie. Might be that. Yeah. So um, okay. So one of pretty thing right now is Barbellus. They're gonna send one guy from Alpha into the light uh, into the tunnel. The Charlie guy is going to grab Theta and Bravo guys they're going to hold Kappa and set up Gunline and then Dragoons Alpha into Tunnel Charlie they're going to do for a double cap Absolute and Theta and Bravo is going to be the main body holding oh, 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 oh. that's what I'm calling Alright yeah. 
I'm just really, I'm already I'm really really excited because Bear Calvary is bringing three Alice's, <laughs> and they're also bringing a, a Cyclops, a Flea, and yet yeah, you guessed it, another Flea. So that's where all the tonnage went. So Dragoons is bringing LRMs again. They have a pair of trebuchets. Uh, so 60 LRM tubes across those two. They've got triple annihilators with uh, LB10s and medium lasers, as well as uh, ER smalls to taste, I assume. And then they've got the commando to hold the locks. So Ooh, they brought 300 tons of uh, heck off and then 60 tubes of artillery. And they've set up both their trebuchets on these nice high points to kind of peek for those things. And what's that? You already have commando. Been... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, stuff your fear may have tried to get some cheeky locks. I said, there's a UAV up right now, actually above uh, Kappa, and it's definitely hitting that first Atlas. And we see missiles already running down on Mr. Brightside. They have no AMS to speak of, so it really is. They have to either notice that UAV or shield and not take damage. They're looking around to see if they locks. I don't think they have noticed that there's a UAV above them. Even the Cyclops is looking behind them to see if they notice it. The Atlas, though, was able to get behind cover before too late. It does look like over here, Death Arch Angel has noticed that Stuff You Fear is indeed taking their cap, so they're going back to see if they can engage. Against that fight, though, I think it might go towards the Commando. Mm -hmm. Very clever back cap from uh, Moonsyn Cloudburst there in the fleet. Ooh, yeah, I'm I just see. Gonna add that the Commando with the UAV did good work on gathering intel for Dragoons. I'm gonna have to remember that sneaky UAV strat. A nice artillery strike hitting the annihilator of Haji, so it actually goes down to 81% already. Looks like that fight has disengaged from the flea against the commando. Stuffy Fear was chasing, but has now decided to disengage as well, not to want to be pulled out into any targets. It looks like the most of Bear Cavalry is just sitting on Kappa right now. Looks like they're trying to get an intel. Monsoon Cloudburst is the one that's probably gonna see the most immediate action. Is already have a UAV going up, but being a fleet 20, hopefully they can stick around. They do indeed grab the cap as the annihilator is forced to come back to deal with it. Yeah, the, one of the glorious things about the, the EZN systems that you see on those stealth mags is it can be very hard to get an LRM lock on them. Oh, but Sally Attack does get around that as it actually does take out the leg. That Fleet 20 has to hope it can disengage with the Annihilator looking at its face. I don't know how long this world is for the Fleet as Monsoon Cloudburst does indeed go down. It was a brave attempt, Flea, but the Annihilator said no thank you. <laughs> Noticing that I don't see the cap points above my screen, can you tell me what the key is for me to bring those back? Um, it's currently Theta is belonging to blue team, which is bad. That's weird. Is that a bug? Uh, Kappa is as well. And Dragoons is recapping as well. And I, that said, I do not know the key to bring back the scoreboard, but the current score is 210 for um, uh, for the Bear Ballers. They have the a sliver cap on Theta and the nearly full cap on Kappa. And the Dragoons have just taken back Epsilon. Sorry, right, I brought it back. I figured it out. Excellent, but uh, yeah, Bear Ball is just kind of saying fight me IRL here. They've they've set up in some cover and they have the two caps, so Dragoons do need to push into them. I mean, not for long as stuff you fear it doesn't indeed grab Theta back and with one mech, light mech down, it is going to come down to the other light mech to potentially pull in some work. Hmm. Thankfully, yeah, they do have Death Archangel in the backup fleet, who is looking like he's going to take the roundabout route to Epsilon, but uh, don't think that's going to go well for him if he goes for it. I think this right is a now standoff for sure. is on the side of the Dragoons. It is up to Bear Baller to do something, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we see the deployment start. Everyone's kind of shuffling their way up the hill. The Annihilators mm -hmm. are moving up, that's for sure. And the side Atlases are just kind of having to buy their time at this point. We do see Death or Angel making another side flank, though, maybe to reclaim Epsilon. Well, I think what they're hoping is... Um, if they can force Bear Brawlers, or sorry, if Bear Brawlers can force Dragoons to keep one of those Annihilators on Epsilon to deal with these 20 tonner, oh no, they're just gonna push in. Hylas Dragoons has had enough and is enough. Let's get this fight on. And this looked though, a little bit of damage coming up from the MRMs, but ooh, a bigger hit coming in towards White Tiger running the trebuchet. That right arm now being poured out. Not to be disappointed, the other mechs are actually coming in as well, trying to see if they can put some damage. Another trebuchet trying to put some LRMs and ER mediums, but the Atlas, that's the thing, is every time they poke, they're gonna take hits. Another beautiful artillery strike zoning out, but now Succubus is kind of out in the open. If these Atlases notice this, that's a lot of damage they can throw at them. Looks like they're just taking shots. Oh, there we go, Guardsman making the dare escape, trying to cross over. Same thing with Mr. Brightside, also crossing over. Trying to put some damage into the succubus. 
I don't know who's gonna win this one. Between the Annihilators bringing up the tanks and artillery turns of the century, with the Atlas as being the nostalgic factor of the same. Who's actually going to claim it? As we see that the Epsilon has indeed via grab by our Fleet 20 coming from Bear Calvary. But not to be disappointed, Highland Dragons do, 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 does indeed grab Kappa. Another artillery strike coming out, and boom! There we go, another component being taken off by Mr. Brightside's Atlas, down to 46%. Another component being taken off Guardsman, down to 40%. I think we're finally seeing the, the hard part of bringing many Atlases into the fight is that they just don't seem to be able to get close enough while well, these mechs putting in this damage. They are going for the Kappa to see if they can reclaim it, at least get their command point lead as now it's going to come into fleet 20 doing all the work notice that the fleet 20 because some of the game winning decisions could be made between the fleet 20 and the commando back here while we seeing a lot of fighting going between the heavy tonnage on this side of the battlefield the fleet and the commander are going to probably decide the rest of the match Ooh, here we go with the Another coming in from a Cycling. It's two of the Atlases. Those Atlases trying to put the damage back in. We're seeing more component shots. Uh, Cyclops dealing it out with the Annihilator itself. And we got our first kill and first death going towards Kalami. And not to be disappointed, Guardsmen falling in quickly after as the Annihilators are pushing in. The Cyclops, though, is able to finally take out Succubus. Putting in some more damage. The Atlas and the Cyclops have been pushed out. The Fleet 20 coming in to put some good back shots on the Annihilator. But not to be disappointed, Haji is seeing that and wanting to put the hits back in. Finally, the Cyclops goes down as we have Sir Epic Potter doing his Lord's name and actually doing the damage. And sadly, goes last Fleet Mac because it gets taken down as well. Yeah, what we saw nice there play. was just the chip damage from the LRMs and some great artillery strikes, as well as a bit better fire focus coming through from Highlander's Dragoons. Once they finally started up that push and those Annihilators finally got in gear, it was their fight to lose, and they decided, nah, I have LV-10s, I get to win this brawl. Yeah, and I would add that when that flea couldn't flee in time and die from the Annihilator, I did on. see Babylus kind of get into sham the shambles around the Bravo 3 area that they're holding. They were moving up and down that grid kind of like lost the ship so i think they were trying to reconsolidate the force and they kind of push up and another thing to note um for dragoons they did something tactically different uh, at the end of the fight so they had the two trebuchets launching missiles at two different targets as opposed to focusing on one i think that <laughs> would be a better play given the positional advantage and numbers advantage that they had in, uh, at a point in time where they could actually be distracting, blinding, and uh, just putting pressure on two players instead of just one. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing that I would want to do if I'm Highlands Dragoons there is I know that I have LBXs on my Annihilators, which do get those nice bonus crits if they hit an armored component, I think. Double check me on that. But I do want, more so with those LRMs, their job is to strip the armor off the mechs rather than necessarily go for the kill, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, we're talking about heavy drops here. The heaviest mm -hmm. of the heaviest drops. How much like, how much time would those lerms need in order to strip off the armor? I mean, you've got 30 tubes each on those trebuchets. Um, I don't know the damage math, but they had probably a good solid two minutes of firing, I'd say, which would be enough. Like oh, we saw it strip oh, a lot oh. of the armor off those uh, off the oh, atlases yeah. of bear brawlers. Uh, real quick, Sir Epic Boner running the another one X did one thousand one hundred four damage. <laughs> what? Yeah, that, artillery that's strikes. I'm assuming, but wow. I I don't know that it's just the artillery. He had what quad LB eight tens. As I well mean, me. yeah, for sure. And he had, he, he, what was he shooting? Atlases. Who can take, soak a lot of damage? Atlases. So he definitely had the sponges to shoot at. He it's also did get both, uh, both the flea kills. It was Sir Epic Funner and that beautiful, beautiful Atlas that uh, destroyed my hopes and dreams and the hopes and dreams of the Flea 20. Wow. I would have thought that this would be wow. a closer match, given that Bear Brothers had the cap advantage and was just banging on the timer running out, but Dragoons took the fight to them and won. Mm -hmm. It was close up until it wasn't, unfortunately, is the, the way those sort of things go. And, um, um, on a, a side note, we are we're approved for an interview, but we have to make it quick. 
So we're gonna have to swap over to the match room run now, okay? All right, let's go. Gotcha. All right, let's do it. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Uh, qualifier here is we can't stay too long because uh, we've got lunch appointments. I mean, food is important, so absolutely. We'll make it quick. Yeah. I, uh, first of all, thanks again for letting 2D20 crew cast us. This was a great match. You guys put on quite the show from both sides, so thank you. Woo! Mm -hmm. um, hey, hey, hey. We Obviously, we won't be able to go over too much of the, each of the matches, so as Zane, Vampy, I think we shouldn't just focus on each match as we've done in the past. Instead, maybe we should just go for general uh, vibes or general uh, thoughts throughout the entire tournament or entire round. What do you think? I do have a, just a quick question for Bear Brawlers before you start in. So drop four. Was that a yep. planned LRM drop, or was that you wanted to uh, uh, give them a taste that, of their own medicine? No, no, that was a planned LRM drop. Okay. Well, just I've... that uh, previous match testing with uh, four awesomes wasn't as awesome. Sorry, three awesomes wasn't as awesome. So we decided not to run the, four, the three awesome bill. And then... Uh, Somebody else decided to run two awesomes. So, um, yes. <laughs> uh, we, we felt it was almost a matter of pride that we had to respond with more lums. So, uh, a few short adjustments, but yes, <laughs> uh, it was planned that we'll bring some lums for drop four. Mm. But now, beautiful matches there, guys. I was going to say, the only, the only thing I had a question about was, like, it seemed like... Both teams obviously had a game plan going into it. From Bear Brawlers, I feel like that you guys consistently, almost in every drop, wanted to be in the brawl. That's what you wanted. Like you, even with your LRMs, you guys made that push up that river in Canyon Network to get in close to to for the Mexi already isolated to get in close. And then for uh, I would have to say from Highlander Dragons, it seemed like you guys were down for the range game. That's what you wanted to do. Is that an accurate assessment from both teams or off the mark? Yes, pretty That's accurate. accurate. Pretty accurate. So was it, you guys feel like this was a classic rock, paper, scissors, range beats brawl? Or do you feel like that it just kind of came down to little things, little micro uh, movements? I think it's, it, you know, some percentage of it is going to be due to the differences in the deck and some percentage of it is, is executing your game plan in the match and thinking on the fly. Um, it's really hard to put the sole, you know, put, what happened on once one thing right it's always a multi it's a multivariate problem yeah uh it was pretty much a uh, range versus brawl because most of the decks that we had were all built for brawl so yeah yeah i think uh i mean heads off to Highlander the goods for the, the decks i think uh most of the time we were kind of caught out especially in the job tree we were kind of uh, surprised actually with the Fafnir and the Awesomes, but um, regardless, ex as well, execution-wise, I think for there were some things that we learned from these drops as well for Bear Brawler side in terms of our execution, and definitely things we will take into the final week of ISC as well. I definitely we, think... Oh, yeah, we learned a lot too. Um, the matches were, you know, the you guys did really well on the second Solaris drop, and the, uh, the first Canyon drop was a lot closer than, you know, it, it, you guys pushed in and it was close like right like two things go your way you probably win that one and uh it's always small things here and there at least as uh, someone who's kind of learning the game um dragoons it was really nice to see how you guys would set up to receive pushes because you don't often see teams like very deliberately take those sort of concave positions especially in solaris drop one yeah and and we tried to do that in drop two and we just just didn't execute it slash kind of it, it looked from our perspective like like bears brawlers was retreating around into the plot into the plaza on, on the other side of that building near epsi so we're like ah we'll just push into epsi and we'll probably catch something and they didn't actually do that they were just kind of chilling in that little like you know street and then just won the trades mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do want to cause any more nascars there's really enough of that so. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny um so yeah true. i think this map set um lends itself uh towards accepting pushes right it's hard to if you don't have a deck that's all jump jets it's hard to brawl on canyon right because mm -hmm. there's just no there's very few clean path towards your towards the other team and also with the is mechs it's very difficult to like 
get this if if you were getting speed and jump jets and your firepower limited. So kind of the map and the nature of the ISMX kind of lends itself towards needing a little bit more range, even though you look at the quirks and it says, oh, look at these durability quirks. Well, then, but the other side has the same durability quirks, right? They're bringing the same max with the durability quirks, so a little, a little bit of range helps. Mm -hmm. So just one question from me for Bear Brawlers on drop five on Frozen Night. When your flea did the sneaky capture on Absalon, and then when it tried to flee but couldn't flee in time and just died, uh, it seemed as if you guys were thrown into, into this array at Bravo 3. So uh, your movements were kind of scattered and there wasn't a clear direction, it seems to me, from the perspective, uh, from the spectator view. Uh, in local speak, it seems like you guys like Galangabo for a moment. So was that what happened there? Well, uh, I, say, I think uh, I, I agree with, actually we're a bit more uh, static in our positioning, uh, mainly because, um, you know, we're in this position where we're kind of hunkered down. We know that uh, they have lugs raining out on us if we are pushed out. We had, they had anni three annihilators as well. We got the information before our flea went down. And we were considering uh, and talking about actually uh, holding out for the long game, for the points. Uh, there was a small window where we actually held three cap points and we were wondering if uh, there's something you could do with that. Uh, uh, in a sense, I think uh, definitely the lumps and the annihilators were uh, kind of pressing on us and we felt comfortable hiding for a short period of time, but definitely we stood still for way too long. And uh, yeah, again, there's something that we have to learn from there. I was going to say one thing that I've kind of was interesting watching the cast, because well, we've casted now three or four, now this will be our fourth cast match, and a lot of those previous matches were definitely decided by caps and by light mech, light mech play, and not to take away the light mech play in this one was really good, but it felt like it was definitely more heavy sided where we saw a lot more heavies and assaults actually doing a lot of the work. Um, I have to say, our it seems like from both teams, majority of your pilots maybe a little bit seem to be more focused on mid medium mechs to heavier, or do you feel like there is a little bit of discrepancy where you have a lot more light mech pilots still? Mm, okay, so for this, the, okay, the way the drops are structured, given the tonnage, if you wanna, if you wanna maximize your your firepower, you kind of go like all mediums, because if you take like three crabs or three Vulcans, you get pretty damn good uh wubba wubba. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, three crabs and three Vulcans is a drop for drop one or two. Yeah, pretty much. So the thing is, uh. The earlier drops, generally speaking, if you look at the way most of the games seem to have been playing out, the lights are usually there for the scouting and the capping. Then the the heavy lifting is usually done by the mediums and the heavies and the assaults. So that's usually how we tend to look at it. Uh, we don't actually have on roster a lot of good light pilots. Uh, this I'm I'm going to be quite honest about this. Most of our guys tend to be, uh medium heavies and assault pilots so usually finding good light pilots is always going to be a problem i think for a lot of teams as well that would match the demographics of mwo i think mediums and heavies are like by far the most played max yeah, yeah. I, I actually i played as a light pilot in competitive in several different tournaments and then once i started drop calling you can no longer do that from a light because it's just it's just too much stuff going on. So that seems fair. we that have fair. we have two guys that are good, um, and then we have like a bunch of people who are average at it. And you can't afford to bring an average light pilot into a comp comp match because it's like every every single role is important, but the light mechs set the table, right? They they dictate the battle you can fight by taking caps, by killing the other light, you know? And yeah. if you don't have, if we know that the other team is gonna have better light pilots, we, we're always trying to figure out like, all right, like if they send the lights on, you know, the Fafnir, for example, and they got the Fafnir, right? They got them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the plan was to have our Wolfhound and the Fafnir just be good enough to kill the Vulcans, you know, or just, just be good and a lot of times that doesn't really work it's kind of like you know i'm basically saying i don't want to bring a streak mech because 
unbiased against it or something like we <laughs> probably should have brought a streak mech on um on that first canyon drop where we had lrms but we didn't i will say it almost feels like there's a bit of a chilling effect on streaks because you can't bring them drop one and two which is the drop where you would want the streaks the most i feel and yeah then... yeah it's opportunity cost right it's like mm -hmm. i can bring these what mech am i going to use you can really you can use an assassin it's kind of ammo limited and then if it it's still not that great of a mech because you can leg it easily so it's you know there's no huntsman there's no interspear huntsman as far as i know maybe you could spend 65 tons and bring like a catapult a1 or something but that's too much tonnage right R68, so, just hard commit to the trash can clearly yeah but, uh, i want to add really quickly to just comment uh highlander dragoons they they really went for licks uh, i didn't realize they were lick people but um yeah they were really good at uh, focusing us as well in our licks mm -hmm. i was gonna say uh, from both teams like the two highlights for me was that bear brawlers and I, I feel like the last drop, the only exception to that was just you're running an atlas. It's there to soak damage. It's not going to move fast. Like we we already know that. That's very rare. But all the time, Bear Brothers was looking to engage, and whenever they were able to get like an actual momentum push, it was went, went relatively well. It was a good fight at least between the two teams. But I will say, and this is obviously Highland Dragoons did great in a lot of their matches. But your artillery strikes, my god, those artillery strikes were pretty spicy and looked very painful. Uh, Monsoon Cloudburst alone uh, took a, an unfortunate, after taking all the LRM shots from those awesomes, then took an artillery strike, I think sent out by your spider pilot, and that was probably the most debilitating and, like, uh, a mind mess up I've ever seen. So I just, I know there's a lot of things to say and brag about and talk about those, but those are the two highlights. Bear Brawlers, <laughs> big shock, you know how to brawl, you wanted to be in the brawl at least. And uh, Highland Dragons, my goodness, besides everything that was going on, your artillery, you need to pay those engineers more money or something, because those guys were yeah, doing I some work. I, I was a spider pilot and I I didn't notice that it hit that hard because I you know it's I was like oh, I'm going to put it. this and I'm going <laughs> to get the you know I'm going to get out of here because I'm going to die right there's three or four mechs looking at me so I I knew that I was probably going to do something I didn't know I didn't I'll have to go back and look at the replay to see what actually happened because oh, I watched it so you'll, it, you'll see it <laughs> yeah I was in cover I applied it, and I'm like, "All right, I'm getting out of here." And I almost got legged in that match. Um, I was, I had a red leg at the end of it. Uh, the highlight for me was in drop one. You can see uh, the fleet pilot just make this little dip behind the building to break radar depth, and it's just like, "Oh man, so clever!" Just like take a little dip behind, dip behind, and then when bear brawlers had pushed up, your fleet just had e easy access to all the backsides. So yeah, well, for me, go ahead, Vampy. Yeah, it's me, a combination of, you know, I think was it in the second drop the flea went down, and that was a big reason, you know, a bunch of shit happened that, that caused us to lose. But um, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking, the small difference that I'm talking about. Like they got they got him in that drop and then won, right? Mm -hmm. And we couldn't set the table with the flea. Drop five, where I thought bears, you, you guys had the opportunity with the tree cap that maybe you guys could run the timer out and win, or it's gonna be a really close one. But then Dragoons just pushed and we the, the match ended there. And we learned what LBX tens do to uh slightly beat up Max. So oh, yep. I was gonna say that, that last fight, yeah, it definitely could have gone either way. Um, as far as like the actual push, because it was that two minute, three minute second mark when it was actually got cl that close to where the uh, Highland Dragons made that push. It, with the t and like I saw, you guys were already going for a, yet another uh, back cap. They you brought the fleet mech in order to probably reinforce your your assaults being pushed. It definitely that match was close in my opinion. It was a good fight, and it was, losing some of the light mech early on was unfortunate. But that was a close match. It was really mm -hmm. exciting to see that. Yeah, I think so. I think if we had waited th like thirty seconds more mm -hmm. yeah. to push, we would have lost. Just and the sheer tankiness of the Atlas. <laughs> when, when they kind of went in on Kappa and they were back capping Epsi, we we're kind of like, you know, oh, this is we don't know really know what they're doing. Looks like they're trying for a control strat. So it's kind of like, all right, we just have to, we kind of have to take five to ten seconds and. 
like calm down, reorient ourselves to what we what the problem we have to solve and then solve it. So they have the cap lead. We don't want to push, you know, we're annihilators. If we start pushing it just and we leave our trade chase behind and our commandos off doing its own thing, like we're probably gonna lose because it'll have a tonnage advantage on us. So it's like, all right, we have to take one cap. We have to try to kill the flea, which we killed the flea. And then it's all right, okay, we got one flea down. Let's take two caps. All right, we have two caps now. Let's move the trebuchets up and they can start pop LRMing and and they're gonna have to move out of their position now because we have two caps. Like they have to try to do something. So then we just kind of made the slow push after we had kind of executed a couple of steps to flip the caps back and and take one of the fleas off the field because we don't you don't want to push with those in behind you. They could have killed one of the annihilators pretty easily. Mm. Mm. All right, okay. I know that we have people uh, have to go. I was, Ms. Bear, is that what you're about to say too? Yes, I need to run. My missus is staring at me now. That's okay. It's my fault, Mrs. Bear. Uh, I apologize greatly. I, I, I will take all the blame, so you can put all that on me. I just want to say thank you again, Mr. Bear. Thank you again for... Oh, let me thank you for everybody. Bear, Calvary, and Ireland Dragons for giving us the opportunity. Uh, if I can ask one final question, it's a short one. Is there any feedback you would give to ISC? Anything you would want different for next year? It, 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 I mean, if that's too much of a question, I'm feeling that might have been a bigger question. Um, yeah, I, you know, I really like, uh, if it's going to be industry only, I, I, you know, this might be a dumb suggestion, right? But I would almost take the annihilator out because it appears like the only thing that can counter annihilator is like a different kind of annihilator. Like if they're just too good. And it's also and arguably, it's also yeah. arguably can, clan tech and lore. Because it's lost yeah. tech in your sphere. You know, maybe on, on a bigger on a bigger map in the heavy tonnage deck, you might have to you might not be able to bring it because of it's just too slow. But we brought them on Grim, other teams brought them on Grim. That's the biggest map. So I, I don't interesting. You know, you shouldn't ban mechs. Like that's probably a bad idea. But I just there's just nothing that can compete with the firepower and the armor. Hmm. That's fair, Mr. Bear, anything? I was, going, I was going to just say stock mech only. Stock mechs only. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm a, I'm a. I know that was probably a joke. I wouldn't mind it. I'm not going to lie to you. I would actually be okay with that. That'd be. That sounds hilariously great. Uh, I mean, that's one way to get rid of the, the Annie. So yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. That's actually, that's actually a really good reductio ad absurdum. So I maybe I rescind my suggestion. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. oh, go ahead, Brightside. You want to add something real quick? No. Uh, well, my my thought is just that. I mean, uh, I I asked Max very clear. Um, maybe I don't know if it's too OP to have more than one hero mech. Maybe not multiples in the same drop, but maybe uh, an allocation for uh, other hero mechs to be in the same drop as well. Just maybe like a limit overall for an entire drop, and just once you hit that limit, you can't use it anymore for the rest of the match. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I could see like that. Hero mech point system, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure we'll have a little more like back chat afterwards, but I want to keep Mr. Bear too long or anybody else. I just want to say thank you once again to both teams, Bear Calvary, Highland Dragons. You definitely gave us the game we were hoping for. Feel free from either team. Hit us up if you want us to cast another match. We would definitely be there. We're new to it, but we're excited to do it, and we do try to be somewhat okay at it. So please yeah, feel free to hit us up. Give us any feedback once you watch the backlog video. An easy shout out though to Innisfear Coalition. Thank you, ISC. Thank you, Aces Wild, for putting this on and allowing us to actually participate in a tournament from casting, playing, or anything in between, even viewing. And once again, thank you for the MechWare community for still being around, still playing games, and still kicking ass. So thank you, Mech Warriors. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Anto. Right. Thanks, Zane. Thanks, Ramp. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Have a good night. Bye. All right. See you guys. All right, guys. Cheers. We'll move over to our thing and have final thoughts, and then we'll end the stream. Okay. <laughs>
And consumables next round. Free us from the tyranny of the MPL. Yeah, consumables. I mean, we saw it being like, like I don't know how many we saw from Bear Calvary. Maybe we had more of an interview we could have asked, but I'd rather them eat some food and sustain themselves than answer our silly questions. But um, mm -hmm. I, I do feel like that we saw it kind of used and used in excess from Highlander Dragons. Not to shame them. I mean, they're in the game. There's no reason not to. Looking at you, LRMs. So, like, at least in Canyon, absolutely. they brought a variety of weapons. Because wait, we saw the LRMs drop three, and then we saw the um, the Warhammers were gauze primarily, and then ER meads to complement. So we did see much more of a mix of weapons than I was expecting, and then much more of a mix than we saw in weeks one and or uh, the first few weeks of the tournament. Absolutely, yeah. But beyond that, I, I was going to say, I don't really see anything that I would want to change right now. I'm going to reserve those thoughts until after we're finished with the tournament because we got our own match tomorrow to worry about anyways. Um, mm. uh, but uh, yeah, I would just say that was a really good match. I was, I was I was, expecting, I was hoping for more back and forth as far as like drop wins, especially after seeing those first two. But at the same time, all those matches, again, I feel like they got pretty close. Like it did come down to just who was in a better position and who wasn't being learned and had to hide behind cover. I think, because, I mean, not to, like, keep on going with the learn like joke, but those were somewhat of a factor in all those matches, even against Highlander Dragons, against the Hunchback and the uh, Cyclops, bringing those Lurms, maybe wasn't as effective as, like, the two Awesomes and the, uh, I think it was a Trebuchet later on, but they were able to position off the champion and the warhammer black widow away from the other warhammers it still mm -hmm. ended in a loss but that was still a pretty effective like of zoning like i don't know if it could have gone different for bear brawls or maybe some different plans i mean obviously everything is 2020 when you're casting but it still was effective and it was really interesting to see that used in a, such a way i think the the big thing that highlander goons brought up in the, the interview that kind of stuck with me is the idea that it's like even though a lot of Highland Dragoon wins looked really domineering and like look, they looked like very much the dominant team, part of what made them look like that is the fact that they knew how to push their advantages. And True. there was a couple little mistakes that they were able to capitalize on early. Stuff like getting the pick on the flea in drop five. Stuff like catching out that awesome, the victor from Bear Brawlers as True. completely as yeah. they did with the LRMs in drop three. Like, had they not gotten those opportunities, and those opportunities are largely luck-based, those matches could have gone very differently. Very differently. And Vampy, you have any thoughts about this? Uh, not at the moment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was quite the match to watch. So we're, I think we're still, even though we were just watching it, I'm a little sweaty. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was, mm. I was excited to watch that game, and so I got a little hyped watching it too. Now, now I'm just worried that we need to put AMS on our drop three and four. So. <laughs> <laughs> Less of the day, AMS keeps you somewhat healthy, everybody. <sighs> All right, well, uh, if there's no other final thoughts or anything can feedback, I guess we're saying goodbye. Have a nice night, folks. Yep, thank you once again. This is 2D20 Casting Crew with Yuntel, Zane, and Vampy. All being awesome, all being great, and being here as much as we can. We have our next match, just a little uh, sneak preview or sneak, or yeah, sneak preview. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, for tomorrow against Strike Wing. Both can be even matched, so I hope you guys can check it out. We'll be at a five minute delay. I will be streaming it once again, but I won't be giving any of this wonderful commentary, and neither will we be getting some actual good advice and insight from Vampy or Zane. Sadly, you'll just be watching us try to blow stuff up. So if you're into blowing stuff up, come and check us out. Otherwise, everyone, take care of yourselves. Happy hunting, and we'll see you uh, on the battlefield. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.